Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Orbital Potato. This is Production Line. Orbital Auto is uh, is doing pretty darn good. As a company, I'm pretty happy with where we are. Uh, slowly but surely, we are working towards getting all of our parts uh, produced locally, which is very, very nice indeed. We even, uh, in the last episode, uh, managed to completely sort out this, this whole area. This whole area where we're now fitting the door panels and the windows and the wing mirrors. It's all looking totally, totally grand at the moment. And we're in a weird situation where we now have this area, which is working so perfectly. I mean, as pretty much as perfect as perfect could be. And we're actually in a situation where we can now deal with more capacity in the system. So I think we actually need to consider how do we get more capacity. And one of the ways, or one of the only ways I think that we can really increase capacity is by getting another another line over over in this side of things. And this is the, what is it called? The fit body, the fit body section. Um, I think that that's probably what we're going to have to do. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to squeeze another fit body assembly line in over here, but I think that we could probably just start up another line entirely. The question is, where are we going to want to do that? I think now might be the time to to buy an extra area. Um, and part of me is thinking, why don't we just take the opportunity to take out this area? That would be a that would be a good idea indeed. And in fact, if we were to take out well, if we were to take out these two areas, or even that area and that area, we could put the fit chassis assembly in here, and then we could get this whole section up and running with the, the fit body stuff. It would present us somewhat of a problem coming down over here, but I think that that is, that is doable. But we're basically going to need to add a third line somewhere, uh, because we're basically, we're basically at capacity basically at capacity over here. You can see that our existing fit chassis assembly, or chassis manufacturer, I guess, uh, just isn't really cutting it these days. Uh, but we're we're in a, in a very jolly financial position where we don't actually have any loans. I, I don't know if we're, we're actually making money yet. Kind of, we're kind of making money, but we're certainly, we're certainly not making bad money. Uh, don't have enough ideas for this. However, that's the great thing about buying some new space, we can actually get some more marketing stuff, which means that we can just repeatedly, uh, repeatedly have enough ideas to make this whole thing work. So yeah, I think that that is what we're going to do. We'll purchase this and we'll purchase this and we'll move just the entire chassis assembly and whatnot. We'll just move that all up here. Um, we do want to sort of consider, do we want to have a more basic line or do we just want to have, what the heck is that doing there? Um, do we want to have perhaps a basic, a basic line where we just don't have any upgrades. <sighs> Part of the problem is, is that if we just have a purely basic line, for example, a basic line that is not fitting the uh, sensor, the parking sensors in the rear bumper section, eventually, eventually we're going to get to a position where even the basic cars that we're making, even the, even the, you know, the, whatever it is, the budget compact, right? The budget compact already needs air conditioning. That is a common feature. So if we don't have if we don't have lines that are kitted out with all of the latest kit, then I think that we're probably just going to hurt ourselves in the long term. So we're going to basically install this this system, you know, with a whole bunch of smart junctions, putting cars in different directions and whatnot. And we're just going to end up hurting ourselves later down the road. So it's probably worth us just getting it's probably worth us just getting a fully kitted out line as it stands. Um, so let's go and do this. How much is this going to cost? Early cost of 16,000. How much is this going to cost us? 20,000. That's going to cost us 2,000. So we can get these two areas for cheaper than it would cost that area. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, yep, let's do it. Let's expand it here. And then let's also expand into here. Uh, let's take this opportunity first and foremost to get down some marketing departments. Speaking of marketing departments, can marketing departments be upgraded? I'm not actually sure if they can be. No, they cannot be. They cannot be upgraded. That would be that would be a good upgrade to to get if we could do it, but we cannot do it. Anyway, it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, what are we researching at the moment? Adva rapid panel stamping. Yeah, that's going to help out a, a heck of a lot. Anyway, so uh, we're going to move. We're probably just going to move our the entirety of our production up there eventually but for now we'll keep this whole thing running um, and we'll just move 
we'll just basically create an entirely new an entirely new belt an entirely new line or should i say a new half line it's probably a better way of putting it um chassis assembly we need to get the fit front axles and the fit back axles uh that's the fit front fit rear these are all in the same timings i do believe or as close as to that it doesn't really matter uh fit undercarriage sure and fuel tank needs to be fuel tank needs to be oh, i was just having a wee look to see if we needed any special stuff in here but that's fine we need two fuel tank things basically to every one regular thing yep that seems to work totally fine um will still give us the space to basically get a second belt in here when we need it i'm not going to do it right now because i kind of i'm hoping we might be able to make this happen without taking out any additional loans although i'm looking at the state of our finances right now and thinking that perhaps that might not be the case we're going to need to get a resource importer because we don't actually have any of these parts being made locally. Not as far as I'm aware, anyway. There we go. There we go. Let's get all that stuff imported. Good stuff. Okay, so that will... That will do it for... That will do it for this area. I don't think that we'll have any issues importing the goods here. Uh, we also need to make sure that the... That we have all of the upgrades we also need to get the whole production schedule unfortunately it doesn't look like i can copy it um let me just put this down to zero I'm not sure if that'll mean it's not producing anything at the moment but i really do not want to make any vehicles right now i mean okay Cut off that. I don't. Want, I don't want to make any vehicles. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with this right now. It's not something that I want to think about, uh, because. Well, first of all, I want to check to make sure that we're actually making yeah a whole bunch of really nice vehicles. What are we? We're overselling compact budgets. So we've got two. We're making too many. Too many compact budgets. Okay. Um, actually, that's a really good point. We've currently got. We've currently got two. Two or three. One, two, three vehicle designs that we're not actually that we're not actually using at all. That car looks very similar from the front as it does to the back. You would not know that that was the front and then that was the back. Anyway, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, the point is, is that we need to we need to start manufacturing um, we need to start manufacturing off-road sports and pickup trucks. So it might be an idea that whilst this will eventually become the entire fit body manufacturing for everything it might be worth us basically just creating those three types of car well it will become 12 types of car as we propagate it out uh just manufacturing them on here and so eventually when we do move this whole production area up to up to here we can just basically install the second chassis vehicle assembly and we can just replicate whatever we've got on here so this will effectively be the start of a new line uh which is actually quite a good way of doing things at least from what i can see if there is a better if there is a better way of doing it i'm, I'm not entirely sure it's actually going to be are we making so what we're making vans vans suv compacts and sedans let me just double check this so sedans suvs compacts and vans okay so that's four types of car making four types of car i believe there's only seven types of car in the game is that one two three well that's one two three four five six and then the seventh is sedan which you get as a basic um yeah so that's just an upgrade to the to sports that's fine actually okay so the seven types of cars so basically we're making four on one and we're making three on the other that'll get you know changed as we go but for now let's just work towards getting the cars all set up so uh, off-road we need to get all of the features in place so that we don't have any annoyances uh, da, 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 da. cruise control adaptive cruise control adaptive cruise control is the best model so we'll just do that electric windows i mean it's all common there's not there's not many things that are universal well apart from in-car music apparently 
premium music, put that over there. Power steering is common. Solid roof, panoramic sunroof, put a panoramic sunroof in there. Sat nav, basic seats, Nappa leather seats. I have literally never heard of a Nappa leather seat. Um, we're gonna call this, uh, what's the, what's the, what's the name? Budget. Budget is the official name. Budget off-road. Nice. We'll put this up to, to about there. Um, create a similar model. I should probably rename them, but I'm really not that bothered about it. Mid-range. There we go. Mid-range. It's got all the features already. Uh, create a similar model. Bump up the price. I feel that the, the whole... The whole system of selling these things needs to needs to get a little better. Like, I don't think it's good enough how you can just do this and make money. It's kind of crazy. Um, even with the budget car, by the way, we're going to be making, like, a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, we're going to be making a lot more money on the, uh, on the luxury ones, but it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, the sports car. I don't know why I call it budget. I might as well just call it sports. If I'm just going to be lazy and not name all of the things properly. Anyway, duh, 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 duh. yep. Uh, sure, basic controls, touchscreen interface. Sure, adaptive cruise control. Also, it doesn't seem entirely right that I'm able to make such a killing off uh, off basically a car that has all of the features. Like it doesn't make sense how off a off a budget off-road car, I can still make, uh, where is it? Yeah, so from the budget off-road, I can basically still make six grand, even though it's got literally every feature under the sun. It's kind of nice, don't get me wrong, but it just feels a little bit imbalanced at the moment. Napa leather, sure. Uh, and yeah, we'll call this the sports, we'll put the price as that much create a similar model bump up the price mid-range i don't even really care about the price it doesn't actually make a difference as far as i'm concerned put it up to luxury because you know you'll have these customers anyway so it's not like not like it particularly matters okay for the pickup truck this is the last truck that we will be that we will be bringing out Adaptive cruise control. Yep. Let's get it all. Boom, 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 boom. Music. In-car music. Nope. Premium music. Yep. What What does premium music sound like anyway? Is it different music or is it just a different system? Like a different music system? I'm really not sure. Anyway. It's going to be budget. Can you imagine? A budget car. Like an entry-level car with a wooden dashboard. It's quite nice. Okay, there we go, bump that up, and then that's that. Perfect, so I think that that should be literally every type of car that we have available to us. We still need to work out the ratios. Uh, this is always a pain. This is always a complete pain, by the way. 40%, we're near. It's gonna probably increase. Uh, where's the graph? It's here, isn't it? Market analysis, okay. Unfortunately, I need to I need to remember, or I need to remember these figures. Okay, so for the off-road, that's this section. Customers per, okay, so we basically need one, four, one, one for off-road. From budget to the top. One, four, one, one. So it's, it's a total pain. I wish you could just like copy this across. Uh, so change schedule, can't get rid of it apparently. So, um, S, not SUV, off-road. Where's off-road? Where's off-road? Am I just missing it completely? Ah, here we go. Um, budget off-road. Cool. It's a one to four. To four. There we go. And then that's back to one. And then that's back to one. Okay. 
It's a little bit of a little bit of a pain because I've just been super lazy with the names, but it doesn't particularly matter. It's it's fine. It's fine for now. Also, I know we need to get the upgrades to this. I know it's something that I'm gonna do. It's can't be bothered at the moment. Okay, so that's off road sorted. We need to get sports next. So the market for sports cars are apparently much larger. So it's six to four to four to three. Six, four, four, three. So sports. Six, not 61. <laughs> Six, and then four. Uh, down a little bit. Four, and then three. Okay, perfect. So that's that. What's next on the menu? It is the pickup truck. I think it's the pickup truck that we did, wasn't it? Let me just quickly jog my memory. Yeah, it was definitely the pickup truck. Um, so let's go over here. Let's have a little look at the pickup truck. So it's five, five, twelve, two, three, five, twelve, two, three. Perfect. So, uh, pick up. Pick up. Where is the original pick up? The original pick up is here. Uh, oh, goodness. I can't remember. Five. Was it five, twelve, two, three? Five, twelve, two, three. Uh, it was. I should have trusted myself there. Uh, so, five. Twelve. Two, there we go, and finally, three. It's always a bit of a pain to to make that to make that happen, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it when you can get it set up and it actually it's it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, I should probably just buy them all. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, do we need to get any upgrades over here? No. Any upgrades over there? No. I don't think there's many upgrades actually to do with the the whole chassis manufacturing part of this anyway so that deals with that so we now have basically the most important and most tedious bit of the production line set up so now it's just about replicating what we've got over here now the problem is slots blueprints yeah so someone did say someone did say that this was a great way to make a blueprint and not uh, and not lose money now that's quite a good idea, if you ask me. Um, what I'm really here to check is just to see 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so I was basically just checking to see if we can perhaps get the whole thing to work across here. I don't think we're going to be able to do that, though. Um, we might be a little bit constrained for space. Not necessarily constrained, but certainly... A little bit, uh, a little bit, shall we say, pressured. If we want to get it all looking nice. So, do we want to start at the bottom and then work up? It's probably not a bad idea. So, basically, want three fit body shells. Body shells work in three minutes. So, we basically just need that. It's the fit hood. Fit trunk. Yeah, although on a technical level, we could get three fit body shells. And then that could be changed into two fit hoods. It would be kind of nice to do. It would mean that we could kind of optimize our, our whole output. Yeah. All right, well, let's change that to just two fit hoods then. It is going to take an extra layer to make it make it all work there we go that'll work we just have them all sort of pointing up there um perfect or, or will that work see the problem is the problem is is that i'm never really sure if that's just directly feeding into that and then these two are feeding into that one and that one I'm never really sure if that will result in a problem or not Let's play it safe. We'll leave an extra. We'll leave an extra gap for the belt, so the belt can go along here. In fact, you know what? I can just. Uh oh. Can I not? Okay. Turns out that I. 
Turns out that I can't do a conveyor on a blueprint. Anyway, the point is that you'll see this belt will go along, it'll go up here, and then it'll feed off there and feed off there. So we'll see if that works. That should be fine. Um, so that'll only take two minutes. And then the fit trunk, we can basically just have leading right up there. Shouldn't have any issues with that. The fitting bumpers, on the other hand, um, we also won't have any issues with. Fit the rear bumper. Fit the bottom trim. Fit the arches. That is not what I wanted, but that's fine. Fit front arch, fit rear arch, and then we need to fit the vent. Yeah, so that's actually not too much space. In fact, that's actually quite a compact little setup. What's the setup that we've got going on over here? I think, did we give it a little bit more space? Fit hood, fit trunk. No, it's actually totally fine. Okay, well that pretty pretty daintily finishes uh, finishes that up. That's quite nice. Um, we need to get the fit roof section next. Fit roof is actually kind of easy. We just need two for each of these. So we're going to need four fit roof sections. Let's get that. And then let's get that. Yep. And can we do something similar over here? That and then that. Tell you what, that actually works quite well. Not perfectly, mind you. But not badly. Um, we can maybe make it a little bit more compact. Yeah. Yeah, let's not... Let's not try and make it too compact. We'll just copy the exact same system that we've got over there. That way we won't have the belts merging. I don't want to, like, if we were to do it one closer, then the belts would have to merge, and that might lead us to some throughput issues, but it doesn't particularly matter. Total cost 386000 to purchase all of these blueprints. It's a pretty good price, pretty good price, and that's just, we used a tiny, tiny section, really. Um, we used a really tiny section, and that's pretty much a proper and accurate replication of what we've got over there, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now it's just a case of linking this up to here, linking the whole thing up with belts, and then getting all of the, all of this, all of these parts down to this area, because of course the next stage is of course fitting the door panels. Um, that was relatively pain free actually. I'm gonna buy these. I'm gonna buy these blueprints. Uh, it's gonna give us uh, a little bit of a cash flow issue. We're probably not gonna have enough cash to make this whole thing work out, but it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, get this up here. This is all, this belt will almost certainly change. Okay, we are pretty bankrupt. Uh, can we sell some cars? If we could sell some cars, that would be great. Don't really want to take out a loan, although we definitely can. Uh, how are we doing in terms of marketing? We don't have enough ideas. Nobody's clever enough to think up any clever ideas. It's going at three times speed, just on the off chance that we can actually get some money. And also, you got to bear in mind that when we do actually um, connect things up... Oh, this is not going to work. Oh, I really want to make this happen. Uh, okay, that's a real shame that I wasn't able to get all of that upgraded uh, at the same time. Okay, I'm just going to take out a loan. It's kind of a little bit annoying because that is our last loan, so we're gonna have to play a little bit safer. I don't want to. I don't want to play too risky here. Uh, I do want to get the upgrades to rapid panel stamping, though. Uh, so I don't have predictive stock control. I hate how I don't have predictive stock control. Uh, by all, yep, yeah, sure. That's a tiny little upgrade, and it will give us uh, plus twelve percent speed. So that will really give us enough door panels for the foreseeable future. Uh, anyway, let's try and just get this belt up and running, or this, this line up and running, so that we can hopefully, 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 just get everything, get everything lined up and in working order. Uh, we're going to have to forgo that resource importer, because I'm going to build a belt across there. Do I really care? Not really. I can live with that. Okay. Let's connect all this up. Nope. Uh... And this up here, around here, up there, and up there. Okay. 
all lined up. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, so this will come up here. We'll go across like that. And into there. Grant. And this way, as I say, the belts don't link. So that's kind of nice. Okay, next stage is getting the resources to where they need to be. And where they need to be is down in the door panel assembly area. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a very, very long belt, which undoubtedly will look very silly, but that's okay. Okay, over there, over here, over here, over here, and into there. Okay, and that should pretty much be it, actually. The only thing that we need to do now is link up this resource conveyor. We're probably going to need to get, of course, some uh, stockpiles in this area, uh, because we haven't set everything to locally made. Not quite yet, anyway. Uh, let's get a resource importer over there. Resource importer probably don't even need two resource importers, but that's okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Let's get it all linked up. Perfect. Uh, we also need to connect this route to the sort of just general, the just general network, because otherwise we're not going to be able to get any local parts uh, delivered over here. So that's something that we're definitely going to have to do. I don't really know what we're what we're making locally that needs to be delivered over here, but there's certainly going to be some bits and bobs. Uh, sure, we'll connect this area up, and then we'll just connect this area up over here. So I think that that means, therefore, that it's connected to the rest of the network. Yes, it is. It was an expensive. It was an expensive project, and it's going to be even more expensive as soon as we as soon as we make it all go. But I think that that is probably quite a nice place to... Probably quite a nice place to finish things off, actually. Um, yeah, so, ladies and gents, we're going to call it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be turning this whole thing on. We're going to be seeing how it, uh, how it operates. There's definitely going to be stuff that we need to tweak. We obviously need to get upgrades to, I mean, everything, really. We haven't got any robots. Robots is going to cost us a heck of a lot of money. Everything's going to cost us a heck of a lot of money, really. But the point of the matter is, is that we've got this second line. We've still got space for basically another another line probably another two lines actually another two lines very similar to this um and really we're we're looking to we're looking to drastically increase our our production very very soon indeed anyway ladies and gents thank you very very much for watching my name of course has been orbital potato this has been orbital auto i'll see you next time bye